Hi everyone and welcome back to week two of the Firefly Tote So Long. I'm glad you're here joining me today and we're going to get started in just a second. Um, last week we went over fabric selection, we cut, we fused, and then we assembled the front pocket with the zipper. Um, I talked about all the kinds of fabrics to use and if you haven't seen that, um, go back to last week and check that out. Um, Today we're going to finish assembling the exterior of the bag, so the front, we'll put all those pieces together, and then the back. And after we're done assembling the front, then we'll move on to the drawstring closure, and that'll be it for this week. Okay, so to get ready to assemble the front exterior, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I've got everything that I need, and I'm going to just kind of place it together so that everything is set up and ready to go. And I've got my exterior back. I'm going to just push that up since we're going to need that last. Um, I've got a side panel, a center panel, my front pocket, the other um, side panel, and then I've got two of the top bands. So we're going to set those top bands up there as well because we're going to start with the center panel and then move on to attaching the side panels. I've got here the front pocket assembly and we're just going to make sure that everything is aligned and I would just want you to double check um, that the measurement on each side is equal so that you don't have a, a crooked pocket. It's kind of easy to get it on there crooked. Um, it may look straight but I always like to double check with the little seam gauge or ruler. But I'm going to get that on there and pin it and then we'll get ready to go on to the next step. Okay, so that's all pinned and I'm going to baste it in place along the sides and bottom edges. Um, just keep that zipper pull out of the way. And then uh, I'm going to also, before I go do that, I'm going to mark this line. There's a line here that you're going to mark, the measurements on the pattern. Um, just got my chalk pencil and draw that straight across the bottom edge. This is going to prevent the items in this slip pocket from going down underneath the bag because this part technically will be on the underside of the bag. Baste along these and then sew or top stitch right along that marked line. Okay, so I've got everything basted in place and then the line here sewn. And so you can reach down in there and feel your slip pocket and also open this up and check out that, how that looks. Okay, and so we're gonna leave this zipper pull halfway open. We don't wanna hit it when we're sewing these side panels on. And so we're gonna take the first side panel and just align it to that long edge there. Those measurements will match up and we're going to pin it in place. And we'll repeat that same process for the second side panel. Okay, and then we're ready to take it over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew a scant half inch seam allowance on each of these side seams here. And scant just means that you're going a little less than a half an inch. So not three eighths of an inch, not a half inch, but in between. And what we're gonna really pay attention to when we're sewing are these little end stops. So what I like to do is as I'm sewing the seam, I'll kind of lift that fabric up. Um, I might even unpin it and check to see how the seam is looking. Um, another option is to mark um, the seam allowance here and you could even stick a pin through it to find out where that's going to hit and um, just double check it that way. 
Same for this side. You just want to double check that you're not going to hit those metal end stops. Although it's just something to be aware of when you're sewing. Okay, so we've sewn the side panels on and we're going to just press them away from that center panel. If you have, um, if you're using cotton canvas, you're going to want to use an iron. If you're using uh, waxed canvas or oil skin, you can just press it with your hands. So that's how that's going to look. And then we're going to take it and we're going to top stitch along each of those side panels. Okay, so that is the front exterior all assembled and then we're going to start working on putting on the handles and the top band and then putting it all together. So I'm going to mark the handle placement and for the front um, I have a measurement in the pattern but I also just use the seams to um, line it up to those seams. So. Um, they just go on the inside of that right on the center panel. Okay, so I just line them up there and clip them into place. And if you'll know, there's, I have leather that has a right and wrong side. So I'm pinning or clipping the right side of the fa fabric to the right side of the leather. So they're right sides together. Okay, so then that is ready. And then I'm going to grab the center, not the center, I'm going to grab the back panel and that one I'm going to use the measurements from the pattern. So I'm going to just fold it in half to find the center marking, make a little crease there. There's my markings. Again, leather right sides together with the exterior fabric. Clip it in place. Okay, and then I'm going to take it over to the machine and just baste these leather pieces in place. So I use just a regular um, universal needle most of the time. Um, a size 14 is in my machine right now. And that's, that'll do for um, just putting in a simple leather handle like this. If you were sewing with two pieces of leather together, I'd probably say get, try and get a leather needle or something different. But um, just a regular needle works for me to get it um, anchored in place there. Um, but I'm just gonna sew just a few stitches to keep it basted. Okay, now I'm ready to place the top band and we're going to do one little step before we do that. So I'm going to grab my top band pieces and we're going to fold these in half wrong sides together. So this doesn't have a distinct right and wrong side, but I'm just going to pick and I'm just going to press it with my fingers. If you have a um, cotton canvas, you're going to want to press it with an iron. Same with wax canvas. If you uh, are using wax canvas, just press it with your fingers. Okay, so that's a crease that we're gonna need for later. Um, don't skip that. It's important for the final assembly of the bag. Um, so I'm gonna grab the front assembled panel here and then 
my band, I'm going to place it, so this is my right side since I put the band wrong sides together to fold it. So my right side is this part here and I'm just going to align it to that edge and pin it in place. Okay, so that's pinned. I'm gonna do the same for my back exterior piece and my remaining top band. Okay, so both of these will take over the machine and we're gonna sew with a half inch seam allowance through all the layers. Okay, so now the seams are sewn and we're gonna press the top band up and away from the exterior assembled front. And when you do that, I'm just finger pressing here. Um, if you were using cotton canvas, you'd be ironing. But that top band, the seam allowance of that and the exterior is going down toward this bag here. So if you see it from here, the side, the top band, the seam allowance is going down and the assembled front is right there. So it's gonna look like that. And then from there, we're gonna to top stitch right along this folded edge, not on the top band piece, but right along this assembled front, the side panel, center panel, side panel. And that's gonna catch the leather, the handles, and then also the seam allowance at the back. So that's the front and we'll do the same to the back. So that seam allowance is going to want to naturally turn in especially when you've got the handles. If you kind of, um, it, it doesn't want to necessarily go the other way. If you're trying to bend them up like that it's going to feel awkward. So you're going to naturally want to pull down. But if they don't, if they're not cooperating, Get that iron out and press it down. You're going to press it down toward this main panel, away from the top band. So opposite direction of that. So again, we're going to top stitch right along this exterior back panel. So now the seam is top stitched on both the front and the back. And then we're gonna place the two pieces right sides together. And we're gonna cut out that bottom corner for when we box the corner. That's gonna give it the depth of the bag. So get those corners aligned. Um, I think I did forget to mention that if you're, you should just double check once your front is assembled, and this is in the instructions as well but you're going to want to make sure it's the same measurements as the back panel. So um, if you get to this point and you're wondering why you're a little off, you might have forgotten that and just go ahead and trim those. You might have a little extra on these sides because of that scant seam allowance, but um, feel free to trim those off. We're gonna go ahead and align those corners and then mark the little squares in each corner. And then I like to use little scissors um, instead of a rotary cutter. Um, just make sure that those layers are aligned, the corners are aligned to each other. Okay, so those are cut out. And then we'll pin along each of the side seams and the bottom seam. And I do want to point out that you'll want to make sure to align these seams here, this top stitch seam, this top stitch seam. <laughs> Just make sure those are aligned and not off a little bit, can make the sides look a little wonky. 
So we're going to leave that top band unfolded this whole time. So if you're tempted to fold it back down, once we get to this point, don't do that. Okay, so now we have it pinned and we're going to sew along each of the sides and then the bottom, the half inch seam allowance. So now we're going to go ahead and box these corners and um, we're going to reach inside the tote and um, if you're using canvas you'd want to use an iron to press these seams open but you can also just use your fingers if you're using wax canvas or oil skin um, but that's just going to allow those seams to align. Um, you could also nest your seams and so what that means is that I would press them just finger press it to one side here um, actually this side on the side seam and press this seam with my fingers back. Um, this is the front panel. You can see that's where my stitching line was from the front pocket. Um, that's just another way to do it to kind of eliminate some of that bulk. Sometimes it's harder to press the bottom seam open. So if you're struggling with getting that pressed open, you can nest the seams like that. So one is facing one way and the other is facing the opposite. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin that and then do the other side. Whichever way you choose, it doesn't really matter, um, just as long as you're consistent by doing the same on both sides. So this one is going to go forward, this is back, just pinching it to align those seams. And then I'm gonna pin it in place. Okay, so then we're going to take this and sew it. We're going to sew right along this edge here with a half inch seam allowance. That's one corner. And then the other corner, we're going to do the same, just a half inch seam allowance. Okay, so that's the exterior. We're going to leave it wrong side out, so just like this. After you're done sewing, just leave the wrong side out. Set that aside. And then we can grab our two drawstring pieces. So you should have two pieces cut out from the accent fabric, like this. And um, mine is directional again. Of course, it's the same print as I used on the front pocket, so just make sure that um, they're lined up correctly. Um, when you do use a directional print for the drawstring opening, half of the print on the inside of the drawstring is going to be upside down. So when you're looking in the bag and you have the drawstring open from above, when you look down, that half inside of the bag is going to be upside down. Um, if you are really against that, um, you can cut these pieces. So it'd be this drawstring piece in half, add a seam allowance on each side. So you'd wanna do the correct measurements, do the half measurement of this height, add a half inch, and then that would be your piece. So you'd have four pieces. And then of course you would sew the drawstring, um, each piece together so that the direction is facing each other. So the upward would be facing each other. Hopefully that helps. Um, it doesn't bother me. I think it's kind of fun um, for when I am using the bag. If I roll down the drawstring, then it is going to be facing up. So either way you choose, it's um, just a personal preference, I think. So I'm going to make these lined up and then we're going to mark. I'm going to grab a pencil. I like to use a pencil, just it's easy for me to see. And I'm just going to mark the halfway point. So I'm, I'm going to fold this piece in half, do a little finger pressing. So there's my little finger press fold. And then we're going to mark one inch on either side of that within the seam allowance. So there's one inch and one inch. And we'll do the same. Um, this is the short end of the, each piece. So each short end, you're going to make these markings. Don't do it on the long end. That's going to be the top opening of your bag. OK, 
Okay, so then we're going to take it to the machine and we're going to sew along each side. We're going to stop at each marking and backstitch, and then we're going to start at the lower marking, backstitch, and go all the way to the end. So we're going to leave this two inch span here open. There's going to be no stitching in here. Okay, so now that I've got my side seam sewn, I'm going to press the seams open. So I'm just, this is just what I like to do. I just kind of offset the seam here and then press it open. Okay, so now that I've got it pressed open, I'm going to top stitch around this little opening here. So if you kind of pull at it, you can see where that is. Um, I'm going to just sew a little rectangle that goes from the top to the bottom and just over into the side seam by a quarter inch. So just a little rectangle and um, it is optional, but I think it holds the um, seam allowance in nicely and uh, makes the drawstring a little more durable. So do that on each side seam. Okay, so I've got those little boxes sewn, and then we're going to fold the entire um, drawstring assembly in half, wrong sides together, and we're just gonna match those side seams. So it's gonna be one big loop. Just matching those side seams. And so then I like to kind of Pull it out at each seam. And then I'm going to go ahead and press. Okay, now all that's left is to make the casing. All right, so the last step for the drawstring closure is to mark and then sew this little line that's gonna form the casing of the opening. So we've got these little side kind of slits now on each side seam. That's where we're gonna feed the drawstring through, um, but we're gonna need to mark it and then sew this casing line. So it's an inch from this top folded edge. I'm just gonna mark it. Okay, so we're going to open it up into a loop and we're going to top stitch through all layers right along that marking around this entire opening. So that'll form the casing. Okay, so that line of top stitching is done. That's kind of what the drawstring closure looks like now. And you could optionally do um, a row of basting stitches right along this bottom edge around the whole perimeter. Um, I find that I'm able to get it align to align okay um, without basting it, but if you just want to have an extra secure um, layer there that you don't have to worry about, then go ahead and baste it. Okay, so that's it for this week. We've got the exterior all assembled. We're leaving that wrong side out, and we made the drawstring closure. That's all set to go. And then next week we're gonna make the lining. We're gonna put it all together. Um, we're going to do top stitching on the handles or rivets or Chicago screws and um, add the drawstring and then you should be all set. Um, I hope to see you next week. Have a great one.